Hello everyone, welcome again in Engman YouTube channel. So in this video, we will learn about pressure transient analysis in a reservoir that can be modeled with dual permeability model. All right, we will perform the analysis, the pressure transient analysis using Sapphire software. All right, so let's discuss about it. All right, so we start with a simple model like this one. We have well and we have reservoir, which is actually a layered reservoir. We have this one, the first layer and the second layer. And the well is perforated throughout both the layer one and layer two. And this is important. The permeability of layer one is higher than the permeability of the second layer. All right. This is the explanation or description of dual permeability model. So generally, the high permeability layer is considered as the first layer. All right, so this first layer with higher permeability than the second layer permeability is considered as layer one or the first layer. And then at early time, there is no pressure difference between the layers and the system behaves as two commingled homogeneous layers without cross flow. But as the most permeable layer produces more rapidly than the less permeability layer, a pressure difference is developed between the two layers and thus cross fall begins to occur. All right. All right. This is the model. So at early time, we have production in both the first layer and the second layer. All right. At this time, there is no pressure difference between the layers. But as the time goes, as the first layer with the higher permeability drains the oil or drains the reserve more rapidly than the second layer, there will be pressure difference between the two layers. And that induces, of course, cross flow from the layer two, which probably has the higher pressure. All right, after the drawdown, the cross flow occur from the second layer to the first layer. All right, so that's the game plan of dual permeability model. We have stratified or layered reservoir with different characteristics. Cross flow occurs between the layers from the layer two to the first layer. And within this system, we have several new parameters. The first one is called layer storativity ratio, which is actually fraction of interconnected pore volume occupied by layer one. All right, so you can see here, V is the volume, and this one, of course, is porosity with this compressibility. All right, so we can call this one storativity. So this omega is actually layer storativity ratio. This is the first important parameter for dual permeability model, omega, which is layer storativity ratio. And after that, we have interlayer flow parameter, which is actually the ability of flow between the layers. All right, this is the formula. So interlayer flow parameter is dependent on, of course, wellbore radius, and of course, the permeability and the thickness of both the first layer and the sum or the total of both layers. All right, so it is the measure of the ability of flow between the layers or the cross flow between the layers. And lastly, we also have kappa. All right, so previously we have lambda, now we have kappa, which is permeability thickness ratio. All right, this parameter is the ratio of the permeability thickness product of the first layer to the total of both. So it's actually quite similar with interlayer flow parameter, except that it doesn't have this term. All right, so it is actually permeability thickness product of layer one divided by permeability product of total of both layers. 
All right, so this is the description of dual permeability model. From here, we go to our pressure and flow rate data. All right, so this is our data sheet. We have, of course, pressure data and flow rate data. The first one is our pressure data. It has two columns. The first one is elapsed time in hour. And after that, we have pressure in PSIA. All right. This is our pressure data. It is important to set our pressure data in this manner. So we have elapsed time and the pressure itself. This is the plot. You can see. So the first period is, of course, flowing period where the pressure drops from 5,000 initially down to just below 4,800 PSIA. And after that, it is followed by build up period where the pressure builds up up to this point, All right, The last pressure is close to 5,000. So there is a little bit depletion. This is the last pressure after build up. All right. After that, we have also our flow rate data in duration in hour and oil rate in stock tank barrel per day. We have two periods. The first one is flowing period with duration of 120 hours or five days, where our well produces at rate of 1000 stock tank barrel per day. After that, we have build up period of 15 days with, of course, zero flow rate. All right, so the duration is 360 hours, and this is our rate data. All right, so we need to input this pressure and flow rate data into the software, and after that, we can perform the analysis. All right, now we go to Sapphire software. 